I certainly think this exhibition will be a revelation um, and really delve so deeply into how you uh, command a way of thinking about narrative and storytelling that brings us all in, but then also is never afraid to deal with um, fraught and complicated and even painful histories, whether those are, are personal or national or kind of systemic and structural. I think that this is something that really deserves to be seen and that, that people will gain a lot from. So thanks thank for you, sitting with Thank me. you for coming here. And, and just something you said there, like, I mean, yeah, like a lot of my work is kind of steeped in pain and violence and, and you know, trying to, for, the fir for, for maybe not the first time, but like in, in a more coherent form maybe, trying to link my own personal experiences in the world and my experiences of masculinity and patriarchy to the much bigger streams of the way patriarchy has, has kind of um, been exerted in the country I come from and in the world. They like this chorus. Yeah, yeah. Ungodly chorus. Ungodly chorus. It's again, the real... So is this a way of you kind of not wanting to detach yourself from like, the complicity of mm. exactly the whole always, I, I always feel implicating myself in mm. some way with it mm. um, is important and um, yeah all of these all of these portraits are always about projecting authority and strength and and that's ownership. really what the film is about we're right at the we're right at the start A friend sent me a lecture on John Milton, the poet, and I was amazed to read that he went fully blind in 1652, the same year that Jan Rubek came to South Africa. Oh, wow. I then got hold of a letter that Milton wrote to his doctor in 1647, where he spoke about his stomach being disordered and flatulent, which is where the title comes from. Okay. Um, and so two things about that. One, he, they believed at the time that glaucoma, which was what made him blind, was caused by the gases of the digestion not being released oh, right. and rising up and <laughs> clouding the, the vision. eyes. Wow. Yeah. What you've kind of occluded through the use of the painted skulls over top of the original composition does kind of bring into um, much higher relief these different hands and their relationship in this one as well. So not yeah. just the kind of the hand in the course of the, the surgical operation, but thinking about the relationship between them. And that was always one of you know Rembrandt's devices as well to kind of move the eye around the painting. Absolutely. I set out three years ago, two and a half years ago with this project, really wanted to make the third of a, of a triptych or a, the sequence of films. So I really see the films now, Moses and Griffiths Y and Epilogue, Disordered and Flatulent as the kind of spine of my practice, okay. more so than everything else. It just feels true to the way I think about the world and it's honest and, you know, it, it, it's a logical extension of the sticky tape works and the paintings that I've been doing for the last six, seven years. I think I made a very conscious decision to kind of um, sacrifice formal coherence in my work for something that I, I see as a kind of conceptual coherence or coherence in the, in the line of inquiry and my way of kind of trying to reflect on the world and explore the world. It's not just about going deep into like an interior place but you kind of externalize it in a particular way, you know, what it means to kind of walk on that surface, to be a part of it, to somehow, yeah. again, as we were talking about with this self-portrait, to be implicated within yeah. it and to really not just be a voyeur kind of watching it, but to understand that we each of us would have, you know, a place somewhere on yeah. this kind of spectrum between how we'd be experiencing the world or what claim we wanted to lay to um, a kind of righteous indignation and, you know, feeling like racism was somehow our birthright, um, to having, you know, a very different um, 
lived experience and, and having to navigate that. Dear George, I'm your son, and I'm ashamed of you. Shame on you, Mikael. Shame on you for all these things, but most of all, for turning away from your own shadows and wounds. You say you miss me and love me, yet you have chosen to exclude me. You have no idea of the pain and outrage that this has caused me. As my sight diminishes daily, a perfect blackness flows in mingled with the color of ashes. Often bringing to mind the words of Phineas. Him, vapors dark enveloped, and the earth appeared to roll beneath him, sinking in a lifeless trance. Is it you? That's me. It's ah, me and my dad. Baby yeah. Yeah, baby Mikhail. Aww. So, um, this is actually the last work I've finished, and it is in the film, but um, my relationship with my dad was very complex and difficult mm. and I read like this kind of um, both love and, and warning in that gesture. So he's obviously mm. looking after me but yeah. he also doesn't want those pencils to fall right. and make a mess. <laughs> so there's a, it's a very, again, the hand. Mm. Um, and the last thing I did on this painting was just like take the pencils yeah, and scribble. And to make, that's the thing, I feel like, yeah, there's like your young self kind of coming through. Which was the, exactly what that little boy wanted to do and wasn't able to do. He wasn't allowed to make a mess. My sister and my mother didn't want to go to the funeral. And I said nothing, I just sat there. And I say, I was George's son. Take out this book. So I just took poem. this photograph of my father when he was beginning to get ill with um, mon neuron disease. Mm. Walking to the ocean, but mm. so vulnerable and in a romantic sense, kind of overpowered mm. by nature. Yeah. Caspar David Friedrich yeah, exactly, of the yeah. figure alone in the, the, figure in the, in the big landscape. But those romantic, even mm. though it was supposed to be about kind of humanity's um, smallness in relation to mm. kind of um, godly nature, the, those figures were always still so kind of dashing and yeah. strong and masculine. And it definitely got remixed as this yeah. symbol of, you know, something you might be able to conquer, even if that wasn't the original intention. Exactly, exactly. And I and think so much of your work is about that, is about kind of peeling the skin back on what the stated intention is within and various systems or structures and then looking at what that's actually come to represent and how that shapes who we are and how we understand ourselves. The studio practice of painting and drawing and collage um, has really kind of enriched my life but then finding a way of combining that with a filmmaking practice where I am working with narrative and sound and I, I truly believe in stories and, and just finding ways to tell stories that I am interested in.